That's a good question because I don't think it has to do with their intuition, right? Because the intuition is the, any when an answer comes to you within the first three seconds, that's your intuition. Yep. If you wait after that, it's just the mind trying to analyze and make sense and give logic to your intuition and then it'll talk you out of it. So that initial thing, that's your intuition. But I think if you want to learn how to trust your intuition, you have to trust yourself first. And the reason why people don't trust themselves is because they keep lying to themselves. They keep making promises to themselves and not keeping them. And the fastest way to lose confidence in oneself is when you keep making promises to yourself and not keeping them. Right. So if your your boss says, please come into work early on Monday, hey, on Friday, can you just stay a little bit later? And you're like, yes, yes, yes. And then you say, I'm going to go to the gym on Monday morning and you don't go. You're showing more authority, respect, and honor to your boss than you're giving to yourself. Now, on a conscious, you know, level of thinking, you don't think this way, but on a subconscious that sees and knows and records everything, it's it's taking inventory and it's saying that you don't respect yourself. You don't you don't trust yourself when you keep making promises and not keeping them to yourself, right? How are you supposed to trust yourself when you know your own word is bullshit? Yep. So I think people need to start there. Why say, if you say you're going to go to the gym on Monday, go to the gym on Monday, or don't say it to yourself. Or if you're going to start this on the first or whatever it may be, oh, I'm going to go to that breathwork class on the new moon or the full moon. And you don't show up like these little things. It's like the, the little things is what matter right? Because those things add up. The big stuff we can see coming from a mile away, but it's those it's those little things we got to be hyper vigilant about. And I think if you want to trust your intuition, you have to trust yourself. And if you want to trust yourself, you need to be very aware and mindful of these tiny increment, small promises that you're making to yourself and making sure that you keep them. Ooh, I love that because I teach that. That's one of the first steps I teach my clients. And, and and how do they do that? And then also what, another thing that I teach is what do you want? Knowing what you want and giving yourself what you want. I coach people on relationships. And most of the times they're expecting others to give them what they want, but they don't even know what they want. First of all, they think they know based on what they see on Instagram, based on what they were raised with. But it, it, unless we actually take the time to eat, write down, what do you really want? What do you want your love life to look like? What do you want your bank account to look like? What do you want your body to look like? What is your ideal? Give yourself that time to write it down and see it. Is this really what you want? And then go and give it to yourself. Most people are expecting others to give it to them. Like, oh, my husband, my husband needs to give me that. Or, you know, like I want him to, to, to make me feel valued, to make me feel loved, um, to make me feel, to motivate me. Oh my gosh. I, that's, that's how I thought <laughs> for years, for 17 years. And I went to therapy and nobody told me otherwise. Okay. <laughs> and like, yeah, yeah. You tell him what you want so then you can feel valued, loved, and appreciated. Like, no, no, go and give yourself what you want. You want more of something? Go and give it your, to yourself. That's how I saved my marriage by actually stop waiting for him to do things and actually doing them myself. I think that also builds your self trust, builds, and, and I think, and it's just taking action. And it, yeah. Following your intuition is scary. <laughs> like doing things, <laughs> right? Wouldn't you say what was the scary? What has been the scariest thing you've done? Like by when you like had an in intuitive hit and you're like, oh shit, I have to go do this. Like, what has been the scariest thing for you? Everything. Everything's scary. You know, it's like, you know, when you're striving, trying to be the best, like, you know, this whole journey, like this bit, like people say, be fearless. Nobody's fearless. Nobody is fearless. It's just a matter of, and I knew fear was never going to go anywhere with me. It's always there. Even if you talk to the biggest uh, performers, whether it's Elton John or Beyonce, who've done it, you know, thousands of times, they're still nervous when they get on stage. So for me, I was like, okay, that fear is always going to be there. And what it, what is this fear? So I became acquainted with it because fear is the is the big bully that will never fight you. So fear will chase you forever, 
and it'll just look bigger and bigger and it's just a just jacked monster just coming <laughs> after you. And it'll chase you for 85 years if you let it. And if you just turn around, look it in the face, right? It's not going to fight you. It's just there to scare you. That's the definition of fear. Mm -hmm. So I started to change my relationship with fear. And I realized that that fear was a great indication of where I should go. Because the only reason fear is there is because it's a gatekeeper to stop you from going somewhere. So I leaned into my fear and everything from ayahuasca to writing a book, you know, to putting my message out there to friggin' posting videos on Instagram to, you know, everything, this fear around every corner, right? So don't think you're going to be fearless and don't think that people at the top of their game are, are, fe are fearless. There's fear. It's just what's your relationship with fear. You got to change your relationship. I'm sure doing this podcast, right. It was, was fearful, like this fear everywhere. Oh, yeah. just, Get used to it, become friends with it, become acquainted with it. And that's the only way you're going to live a good life. I love that. I am. And, and I totally agree. I think I have learned uh, because through coaching, I thought, OK, now that I know how to manage my brain and my emotions, I could get rid of fear. <laughs> I know how to do it. I just need to change the thought and I'll be fine. It'll go away. And that didn't work. <laughs> I was like fighting myself. So I I have this new approach, like just like you said, it's like now just embrace it. It's going to be there. Just mm -hmm. like sometimes like maybe the 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 ramifications of the my childhood trauma might always come back but it doesn't have to take over it doesn't have to take over my actions my life it can be there i just don't need to listen to it i just don't need to obey um mm -hmm. and it might like healing i think it's a it's a never ending thing would you agree of course let me let me let me share one of my secrets to Develop, developing a better relationship with fear. It only feels right. Okay. Okay. So, so here's the thing. And there's actually a study done on this. So if you're nervous, let's say you're going to get on stage. Let's say you're going to get on a podcast. Let's say you're whatever, you're going into an interview, whatever it is. Now, if you're sitting in, in the waiting room or in your car and you're trying and you feel the fear and you're nervous and let's say you start doing breathing techniques. Okay. I heard breathing, whatever you start doing breathing techniques and you're trying to calm yourself down. It's actually not going to be effective. And they did. How so? Okay. I'm going to show you. They did Harvard studies and they said that there is, and you've heard this before, there's a thin line between fear and excitement. Yep. And they said in this Harvard study that it's actually easier and more effective to tell your brain that you're really, really excited for this opportunity you've been waiting for and it's finally here, your time is now, and to get excited that this is your moment and you're going to go in there and crush it, then to do breathing exercise to calm yourself down. It's more effective to say, this is my time, this is my moment. I'm not afraid. I'm actually super excited. And, and that is a, is a big shift. If you can just change your mindset from going to fear, because when you're in fear, you're thinking of all the things that's going to go wrong, right? Yep. Exactly. So what's breathing going to do? It's just, gonna, <laughs> you're, still, you're still, and I'm a breathwork coach. Trust me. Like, listen, I'm just giving you the secret sauce. I keep it a rail. Breathwork is the most amazing thing I've ever experienced in my entire life, you know, but there's, there's, it's all connected, the mental and, and, you know, having these little tools. And I taught this in the, in the training. So you, you're well, well, well aware of the study. So just convincing the brain that it's, it's all going to be good. And you start thinking about all the amazing things that could happen. And it just gets your brain out of that fear and you get excited. And then now you just have a completely different energy than going in with this, you know, a, a, a calm, a calm nervousness rather than a, a, an excitement and charismatic, you know, aura that's, you know, emanating from your field. And it can be done very quickly, like just in like 60 seconds, you know, just priming your mindset. Say, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, I feel the fear, but you know what? I'm actually really excited for this opportunity. It's here. I, I earned this. I deserve this. Let's crush it. Let's, let's, let's go crush it. I love that. And I've experienced that. It is like a light switch. You're like, wait, I'm excited. What's just, what's just happened? It is a, it's a, a switch that happens in your body and it's the same energy. It's just how you choose to view it. And if your, if your brain believes it enough, it, you'll feel the switch. And it's like, Ooh, you'll go from like, oh, I don't want to do this to like, whoa, I, 
I, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, let's do this. I felt that. And I was like, what just happened? Like, yeah. <laughs> what just yeah. happened? Make it till you make it. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you so much. Okay. So how can my listeners find you if they want to get in touch with you or attend one of your amazing breathwork detox sessions? After they yes. attend mine. <laughs> yes, of course. You know, <laughs> definitely go to Alyssa's first. Okay. Um, so man from the stars on Instagram, just w- one word, man from the stars. That's my Instagram. I'm most active on there, not on TikTok and Facebook, although everyone keeps telling me to get on TikTok. And uh, I guess if you just go on, you know, the Instagram, you know, all all my stuff's there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I'll I'll put the link also in the description in any websites and stuff that you send me so i'll have that there thank you so much curtis that was uh, that was amazing thank you so much for being here i appreciate your time thank you for having me thank you to keep up to date with what's coming up be sure to follow me on instagram at elisa e-l-i-s-a underscore Fucci, F-U-C-C-I, underscore coaching, and on Facebook at Elisa Fucci. You can also email me at elisafucci.coaching at gmail.com. Don't forget to leave a review, share, and subscribe to this podcast.